Hank Paulson, former Treasury Secretary uh, for George W. Bush, uh, during the economic crash, uh, was obviously in charge. He was also the former uh, CEO of Goldman Sachs. Uh, on July 21st of 2008, uh, everybody's worried about Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Are they going to go under? Uh, they've already lost a tremendous amount of money. Uh, but he says, don't worry, and he tells the public that the Federal Reserve and the Office of the Controller, Controller of the Currency are inspecting Fannie and Freddie's books and that, that he expects their examination would give a signal of confidence to the markets. Confidence to the markets. Everything's great with Fannie and Freddie. On the same exact day, we now find out because of another excellent article from Bloomberg News uh, that he met at Eaton Park Capital Management, which is a hedge fund company, with about 12 of the largest hedge fund managers in the country. These are, of course, some of the biggest wheelers and dealers in, on Wall Street and hence the richest people in the country. Uh, he met with a dozen of them and said, oh my God, you have no idea Fannie and Freddie. They're in massive trouble. We are likely to take them into conservatorship, meaning the government will seize their property, and hence the people holding stock in Fannie and Freddie will basically be wiped out. That is invaluable information that they can then trade on. For example, they could do a, a, what they call a shorting the stock, which means betting against the stock. Did they do that? Well, we're going to find out a little bit later in the story. So. When asked about this, uh, former regulator William Black, who's now associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, says, quote, you just never, ever do that as a government regulator. Transmit non-public market information to market participants. There were no legitimate reasons for those disclosures, which of course makes sense. Something you should know, though, is that among those dozen guys, five of them were ex-Goldman Sachs employees, where, of course, Hank Paulson was the CEO for a long period of time, and he knew all of those guys. They all got rich together. They all continue to get rich together. Okay, so um, well, um, one of the guys at this meeting is the one that talked to Bloomberg News anonymously and told them exactly what happened. Now, some of this has already been confirmed by other people that were at the meeting. They said, "Yes, we were there. Yes, that meeting happened. Yes, Paulson shared that information. Did they act on it? Well, that's a good question." In fact, the guy who shared this information immediately called his lawyer and said, isn't this insider information? Can I trade on this or no? His lawyer was like, no, don't trade on it. Are you crazy? That's as much insider information as it gets. Now, Hank Paulson's not in legal trouble, according to the professors asked about this, because they say he didn't trade on it. He just happened to tell his buddies to buy it, right? Now, did other people at that meeting go ahead and short that stock? Well, we're going to find out in a little bit. But uh, so you know what happened there. Well, it turns out, of course, that they did go into conservatorship seven weeks later, just as Hank Paulson told uh, his, the hedge fund managers in a secret meeting. And in fact, the various class of preferred shares lost about 85% of their value. So if you were betting against that stock, you made a killing. Well, we can't find out, because it's not public information, whether these specific guys that were at that meeting bet against the stock. But we do know the volume of trading against the stock. In the beginning of July, before the meetings that Hank Paulson had with the hedge fund managers, there were 86.3 million shares traded, bet against Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. On July 24th, after the meeting, that number had jumped to 262 million shares that were traded, from 86 to 262. So somebody with that information came in and said, oh, I'm betting against Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and somebody made a killing on it. Now, what was the effect on the American taxpayer? Oh, not a big deal. Turns out that when we took over Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they were an absolute disaster, and so far, they have cost us $124 billion. Yet another story where we get screwed, and the Goldman Sachs guys that go to work inside the government tell the other Goldman Sachs guys and the other hedge fund managers in their 1% meeting, hey, here's how you can make millions, perhaps billions, off of insider information I shouldn't be giving you. And then later we'll laugh and go, oh, what are the 99% complaining about? We got stuck with the bill and they made a tremendous uh, killing off of it, man. This is what Occupy Wall Street's about. This is what Wolfpack is about. It's, we're sick of these politicians selling us out so that their rich friends can get even richer and we pay the bill.